This is No Longer Bound. Yes, and it's a Friday. Bless God. We are here because we're starting a new series. And we're keeping the old series, but we're starting a new series. The Lord touched my heart to reach out to caregivers. So we're going to be doing a book review on prayers. There you go. Of hope for caregivers. Prayer. Prayers of hope for caregivers. And this book is by Sarah Fargrave. And that's spelled F-O-R-G-R-A-V-E. Sarah Fargrave. And I just want to say today to all caregivers, I know where you are. I've been there. Glory be to God. And and I the Lord, the Lord just touched my heart, you know, to just reach out to you and just to encourage you and to just tell you to just keep going in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. This book is awesome. I mean, it covers, oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, it's amazing what it covers. So if you're dealing with anything pertaining to caregiving, mine was with my mom. So we're going to talk about girls, daughters, caregiving for your mom. All right. It could be anyone else, but I'm going to talk about girls right now. Okay. And, um, what I want to do is I want to I want to pray, and then I want to give a short introduction. Let her let her explain uh, why she wrote this book, uh, Sarah Fargrave, and then I'll tell you know a little bit of mine. We're not going to be long because this is just the introduction. And if the Lord say the same, we'll be coming back maybe on on Fridays if I'm off from work. We'll try to make that our time, but we want to do this because caregivers. Caregivers, God bless you, caregivers. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, <clears throat> I thank you for caregivers. Oh, God, the heart that caregivers have. Oh, Lord, the selflessness they give of themselves. Oh, Lord, sometimes morning, noon, and night. And, Lord, sometimes they have families. They got a spouse. Sometimes they have children. And, Lord, they take on, Lord, the task of loving their family member, loving their mother, loving their father, caring for them, even sometimes it's their child, whomever it is. God, we thank you for caregivers today. Touch their hearts right now. Encourage them. Give them a, a, a shot of energy, a shot of joy right from the throne of grace. Encourage their hearts and their minds and their spirit. Let them know that they are loved and that they are needed. And everything that they do is appreciated. It might not be said at that time, but it's appreciated. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless God. Uh, Brenda, God bless you for coming in. Amen. This is new, so we don't know who will be here today. We just want to get it going. People are here later. But please go ahead and invite somebody in for the next, you know, like 10 minutes or whatever there. But I want to, sh the book is um, a prayer, okay? Prayers of hope. Prayers of hope. And I think you see it in the heading. So let's start with the invitation. She starts out with an invitation to rest. Oh, glory. R-E-S-T, just that word alone is enough to, to get you going. An invitation to rest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Taylor. God bless you. An invitation to rest. And by the way, you can get this book on Amazon.com, okay? And, and you can get it on your Kindle. But I might advise you, if you know anybody that's dealing with caregiving, or if it's you yourself, you might want to read this. But we're going to go through it, and it would be awesome if you would go through it with me. Okay. So we're starting out with Sarah giving her own introduction on why she did this book. If there is one phrase that comes to mind when I think of caregivers, it's selfless servants. Mm, mm, mm. From my vantage point, no calling in life requires more strength, sacrifice, stamina, and patience than caring for someone with physical needs. Now, I'm in nursing, so I do that for my job, but I also did it for my loved ones. I did it for my mom, and I did it for my husband, and at the, excuse me, at the same time, by the way, okay? 
So let me go on because I'm giving you now her introduction. After writing my book, Prayers for Hope and Healing, I received feedback from many readers who didn't face a medical challenge themselves, but who struggle through the turmoil of someone else's illness. A grandma feeling helpless as she supported her 20-something daughter through the loss of a baby. A wife watching her husband go into open heart surgery. That's me. I did that. Ooh. An empty nest daughter caring for her mother and trying to hide the death of burden she carried. Trying to keep a smile on your face. Trying to be there and do the best that you can. Oh God. These heartaches, I'm sorry, yeah, these heartaches and so many others fill the pages of our lives. And yet, as caregivers and loved ones close to the crisis, we're often forgotten in the shadow of the sick. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I tell you, thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading me to this book. I see myself all in it, over it, and around it. How many of you, many a times you were caring for someone or you didn't even, you, you weren't caring for someone, you knew someone was caring for someone. And when you saw them, listen, you didn't mean no harm, but this is what you did. You say, hey, how you doing? How's your mom? How you doing today? How's your husband? How you doing today? How is someone else? It's like, it's like they weren't even there, but you shot right to the person that they were caring for. And we understand that. But I'm, oh my God, but I'm saying it to you. It's like, they're like saying, oh, if you only knew, they are fine. It's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. <laughs> Jesus. I did some one time. I saw someone pushing a wheelchair because I had to push two wheelchairs, one at a time and one at the other time. And, and, and what, 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 what I caught myself doing. You would talk to the person in the wheelchair, but you would forget about the person pushing the wheelchair. Oh, the first thing you would do is talk to the person in the wheelchair. But the person pushing the wheelchair, they are saying, oh God, if you only knew how tired I am right now, but thank you anyway. Let's go on. I got, y'all know me. Let's go on. I'm in her introduction. This is her story. Okay. And so it says here, while I haven't carried the burden of providing long-term support for an aging parent or disabled family member, two requirements that often come to mind when I hear the term caregiver. My life has been filled with the medical crisis of family members. I've served as a short-term caregiver and watch others provide ongoing support to those close to me. It started when I was a young child. My teenage sister battled cancer for four years until her illness culminated in a bone marrow transplant. Going into the transplant, she was given 10% chance, given a 10% chance of survival, and she beat the predictions. While I didn't gra fully grasp her condition at my young age, I knew her sickness could send her to heaven at any moment. The stress it put on my parents was oh, palpable. Even though they did everything possible to lessen its impact on my brother and me. Listen, I got, you, know, you know I'm a woman of stories. As a child, my stepfather had a um, now I know as I thought back at it and I'm in medicine, he had throat cancer. But as a child, I didn't know it was throat cancer. We were living in the country, far away from doctors. And all I know is my mom had to prepare his bed where he could cough, he would cough and cough and cough and expel this stuff. And she would prepare a place for it. And I knew he couldn't eat. So she had to feed him through a tube 
in his abdomen. As a child, I didn't know anything about that. I didn't know why daddy couldn't eat. I didn't know why we had to feed him through the tube. And he would cough all the time and he would expel the stuff. Later, as I got older and found out, he had throat cancer. He worked around asbestos and he smoked Campbell cigarettes and did all of those things that they did back in the day. But my mom, she was caring for him day and night. And yet she had two younger ones there as well as my older sibling, siblings in and out. But the two younger ones of us were there. And we didn't know it, it was just what was going on. But she bore that. And yet she tried to keep the house going and keep a smile on her face and make sure we had food and make sure we were in school and do all those things. Caregivers, 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 God bless you. Oh my, what strength you have. Excuse me, okay, it says here, as still talking about Sarah's introduction, her story, why she wrote the book. As I transition to adulthood life, settle into a comfortable pattern, but after having two children and facing medical challenges of my own, I found myself back in the hospital with my sister. Her chemotherapy from years ago had damaged her heart and the only way to survive was a transplant. Listen, you guys need to share this with somebody. We need to start a watch party. You guys need to start a watch party. Do you know how many caregivers there are out there? Do you know how many people need to be encouraged today? Oh my God, let's not be selfish with this, please. Let's share this thing. It says here, and the only way to survive was a transplant. She was admitted to a hospital near my home and set up camp um, indefinitely until a new heart became available. Because her husband and daughter lived three hours away, I visited her every day of her seven weeks of hospitalization. After receiving her heart, her new heart, after receiving, God bless you, Elder. <clears throat> God bless you, Elder. After receiving her new heart, she lived with me for the month following before she was released to go home. That month was downright daunting at times. Anxiety swelled as I navigated germ control with two young children. Germ control with two young children. Oh my God, oh my God. And we were talking about COVID. Oh, exhaustion set in as I prepared meals that suited Varying dietary needs. Oh, I got to say something right here, guys. Y'all know me. I had three different diets. My mom was on one diet. My husband was on a, a dialysis a, 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 a kidney diet. And then I was on a, a regular diet. And you're, you're regulating this as a caregiver in your home. Three different diets. Oh, God. God bless the caregivers. Mm. Okay, it says here. Uh, and this is her introduction now in our new book. As I prepared meals that suited varying dietary needs, relationships shifted with additional house guests coming and going. I don't have to tell anybody about that at all. We can't do it now with COVID, but I'm telling you, you've been through it. If you've ever been a caregiver or you know someone, oh Lord, they got it. They're dealing with the, the, the person that they're caring for. They're dealing with their family if they have kids. They're dealing with the spouse if they have a spouse. They're dealing with guests if they have guests. They're dealing with medications. They're dealing with doctor's appointments. Oh, can you see? Is there anybody anywhere can identify with what I'm saying today? Pray for the caregivers, please. All right, here we go. But through it all, and that's what I like, Hallelujah in the mighty name of Jesus. Through it all, God filled me with the strength I needed. If we don't go any farther today, I'm going to finish your introduction. But that right there is enough. Through it all, God filled me with the strength. 
if you've never given a thumbs up, if you've never said amen, if you've never said hallelujah, if you've never said thank you, Jesus, this is a good time for it right now. You need to say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You don't have, listen, let's get out of this selfishness that we are in as a world where if it's not me, my seven I, and if it's not pertaining to me and me alone, I'm not concerned. We are our brothers and sisters keeper. Listen, I'm not going to get off on a tangent, but I got to say this. The Holy Spirit has put this on my heart because the world is headed this way. We're getting selfish, but we need to know something. We need to know something. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We need one another. We need each other. I don't care about race, creed, or color. We need each other. We're all in the same boat. We're all caring. Gonna, if we're not caring for somebody, you might in the future care for somebody. My grandfather used to say, just keep on living. Don't look down your nose at anyone. Pray for them. Encourage them. Be kind. No COVID you can't visit, give a phone call something, but be there because you never know when your turn is coming. Oh, hallelujah. It says here, not long after that challenging season, my son faced a medical crisis. A severe infection rapidly formed in his jaw, sending him to the emergency room on his first day of second grade. The situation was serious. It was the first time I've been ushered straight back without seeing the waiting room. If his infection spread to his neck, it would block his air passage. While I stood in the small holding room of the ER, calming my panic-prone son and waiting for the doctors to analyze his CT scan, I did the only thing I could. I prayed. I've been there and I've been in that little room and you pray. If you've never known how to pray before, you pray. You are not ashamed to pray. Oh my God, you, you, it's what the Bible talks about when you're going to war. You go to war for your loved one. You go to war. You're not worried about who's looking at you. You go to war. Hallelujah, Jesus, in the spirit. And you pray. The Bible says the violent the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. You go in with a force before the throne of God, interceding for your child, interceding for your mother, interceding for your father, for your husband, for your loved one. Hallelujah. She said, I prayed. My prayers weren't eloquent. And you ain't worried about the man you snotting and tearing. Jesus. Or flowery. But in them, I pleaded with God to save my son, to give the doctors wisdom and to give me supernatural peace in the meantime, supernatural peace. The Bible says, I will give you peace, not as the world gives, but my peace, peace that surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. As my son was wheeled into the emergency surgery in the middle of the night and spent the next two days in the ICU, I found myself returning to that place of prayer over and over again. Excuse me. Because nothing else in this world felt stable. My pleas were uttered in sputters and spurts. But I knew God heard and understood. Whether your caregiving role is a short term, a long term, or the journey, you've likely cared, you've likely carried a similar burden. Pastors and friends have perhaps prayed for the situation focusing their attention on the sick or injured while you feel the aftershocks of their pain with no safe outlet to express them. That very struggle 
is what prompted me to write this book. Using my own experiences and those close to me who have filled a long-term caregiving role, I have created a collection of devotions and prayers to meet you where you are. This is her introduction still. You're welcome to read the book from the front to the back, or it can be used as a menu of sorts, and we're going to read it. Not today. We're going to come session by session. When a particular emotion or struggle hits, let the table of contents lead you to a page you need. We're going to, uh, she says, as you read, I'll pray you'll sense God's love and peace even when you're exhausted from bearing this burden. He offers a place of rest. I pray you'll lean into him during this trying time. And that's by the author, Sarah. When we come next time, we're going to start with the topic that says, when there, when there is no end in sight, and that'll be for those helping someone in a long-term health struggle. My health struggle was long-term. My husband was on dialysis for 20 years. He was up and about, but for that last, maybe two years to that last year, it was a 24 seven caregiving. My mom, she was with me since 1987. She was born in 1910. And she lived with me until 2011. Now she was functionable up until that probably last maybe five years, she became wheelchair bound. And I only had her wheelchair bound at that time. Then my husband became wheelchair bound. Uh, probably he died in 2009. So I'm going to say around 2000, early 2008, starting in 2008 after April, where he became wheelchair bound, meaning bilateral amputees and all kinds of things. My heart has always been to the caregiver. I got a special place in my heart for him because I know what you go through. But I want to encourage you today. God sees. God hears. God knows. You're not alone. Whether you're dealing with someone now in COVID, whether they don't, they just got a natural, whatever the ailment is, and you are that primary caregiver, I'm praying for you. I'm standing in the gap for you. That God will give you sleep at night. Peace. That you'll be able to sit and eat, eat a meal without listening for that bell to ring or, or listening, knowing that you're going to get a call or you got to jump up and run and answer an emergency call. I'm praying that you will get relief, that there will be friend, once COVID is done, a, a, a relative or someone that can give you an hour. Listen, one hour to be able to just go to the store, one hour just to not have to do anything, just to be you, one hour to drive to the lake like I like to and just sit and look at the water. Read a book. It means the world. So I pray that you will join me. I pray that you will share. I pray that you will let somebody know. Whoever is dealing with caregiving, don't get caught up on, on whether they are a minister, they're not. Listen, we all need help. Pastors need prayer, missionaries, evangelists, to everybody needs prayer. We all need encouragement. We all need help. We all need it. Amen. So God bless you. Thank you for coming. This is no longer bound. Let's pray. 
Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, bless Lord God Brenda Miller, bless Taylor Payne, bless Elder William Daly, bless each and every one that will hear under the sound of my voice, whether they know of a caregiver, Lord, even if they just want to take it upon themselves to just lift them up, that they would do it in the name of Jesus. We thank you, we bless you, and we praise you, Father God, for your Holy Spirit and all that you're doing in Jesus' name. Listen, don't forget to click that link and just go and subscribe. It's right up there, youtube.com, Esther Pinkston, and click that link. Subscribe, share it with a friend. We're going to see you next time. God bless you.